garlic is certainly a test of patience. One of my longest crops to stay in the ground for eight months. I don't mind so much as it utilizes my dormant beds. For me, I plant my garlic in April during one of my busiest periods in the garden. Autumn harvests and preservation is in full swing during this time. I plant a few thousand cloves saved from my biggest bulbs from the season before. Not all of my harvest is for my family. The majority gets sold as a cash crop to purchase staples I cannot grow. Some gets placed in my veggie boxes for customers to enjoy weekly and the remainder gets bartered for things I cannot produce on my farm. In my cool, temperate climate, I find that rock and bowl performs the best, but I do grow many other varieties that all grow well. Like Italian late, which is also suited to warmer climates, mammoth, Monaro purple, dynamite purple, Spanish roja, and rojo de Castro. I grow this range of garlic not just for the variance and flavour, but for the extended storage qualities too. The rock and bowl, Italian late, mammoth, and Monaro purple are the first to be harvested, but are only shelf stable for six to eight months, while the dynamite, Spanish roja, and Rojo de Castro can be stored for over a year. This ensures that my kitchen is never without a steady supply of garlic. I'm braiding some of my harvest to hang in my kitchen. I enjoy walking past the beautiful plat in my country kitchen and the ability to pluck off a bulb whenever I need. As garlic goes into everything I cook, there is no such thing as too much garlic in my home. I made sure I got my garlic up to hang promptly after harvesting making sure that I times my harvest between the rainy days we are experiencing. It is important to let the soil dry out before harvesting to help mitigate the moulds or fungal diseases that may occur in storage. I knew my bulbs were ready to harvest when half the leaves browned off. This tells me that enough skins have formed around my clothes to protect them. I make sure I use a fork to loosen the soil, never pulling the garlic by the stem, as tempting as this might be because we do not want to damage these protective layers around the bulb. Once they have dried throughout, usually after two to four weeks of hanging, it's time to braid your soft neck varieties. At this stage, I cut off the dried roots and clean up the residual soil and loose skins. I take the largest three of my bulbs that I wish to include in this braid and bundle them together, crossing the first two over and placing the third on top. I like to tie them together with some twine at the stage to secure them, making braiding much easier. I take my next largest bulb and arrange it in a way that fits best, wrapping the stalk on the opposite side over to secure it in place. Moving those stalks over to the left, we are going to end up with two separate sections of the stalk instead of three you would usually use for braiding hair. This one is more of a fishtail braid. I now select another of my largest bulbs, arranging it in a way that it fits and looks best, ensuring I wrap the stem with an opposite piece of stalk to secure it in place. I continue this until my braid is long enough.
When I have added enough bulbs, I will continue on braiding my stalks as I did before. I now tie the stalks off and loop the remaining stalks around and secure them together. This gives me a little loop to hang the braid up with. Garlic helps me live my permaculture way of life. I am able to store some for the future, sell some to purchase things I cannot grow or acquire locally, and barter the rest for things I cannot produce but can acquire locally to close the loop on my level of consumerism. I am so grateful for these simple little pleasures. So much abundance has filled our baskets.